When was the last time you needed to go to a bank, walk to a bank to check your, check your bank statement? When was the last time that you entered your car and you used a paper map for navigation? When was the last time you had a question, you needed to walk to a library, open an encyclopedia to find the answer? If you don't remember this, the answer to these questions, this is because you are using technology. We are all using technology to save time, to do things easier. Technology is changing our lives. There has been lots of technological revolutions which have changed lives of many, many people, billions of people. And the most recent one is the AI revolution. And I'm going to talk today about the AI revolution and the Google Assistant, the project I'm working on. So Google Assistant is, I'm very excited about the AI revolution because Assistant is one of the cutting edge implementations of what we will see in this AI revolution. So the next 10 years is going to be, we will be going to be living in a world which is AI first. This is the AI revolution we're talking about. But before going into that, this revolution is very similar in nature to many other revolutions which happened in the past 100 years. These are all big technological revolutions which changed lives of billions, billions of people. It made lots of companies to disappear. It made some new companies to appear. And if you think it saved lots of time for, it, all of these saved lots of times for us. For example, plane. Before, before plane, people needed to spend six weeks to go from Europe to um, US on ship, if you had money to do that. So you're basically wasting six weeks instead of 10 hours just on the ship to go, to go from this point to the other point. And, and so on, there's so many of such, uh, such time-saving scenarios happening with these revolutions. Now, if you move fast forward, 20 years ago, web and PC came. This is from what moment we actually can sit at home and uh, answer, find the answer to questions. We can see our bank account at home. We can um, check the weather. We don't need to wait for the next news to hear the weather. And we can buy things. So this uh, revolution changed our life really, really in a big way. Just think about the moment when web and internet was not there. It's only 20 years ago. Now, there was another revolution which happened 10 years after, and that's the mobile revolution. That's when everything uh, that uh, big, huge, clanky PC could do, and more you can do it with these mobiles which is in our pocket. And it's with us everywhere. It's moving, it has, it's even more powerful because it has a microphone, it has a camera, and it's more personal, you can take pictures, you can share photos, and you can call and everything else. So it's really becoming in a more powerful version of the previous revolution. And now, if you think the mobile revolution is in a scale bigger than the uh, previous revolution of the web, and the reason is that because the numbers of everything is really one order of magnitude bigger. Five billion people will have phones connected by 2020. This includes lots of countries in Africa, uh, also India and every, uh, everywhere else. This is really much bigger than the scale of the previous revolutions. While this revolution is still happening, the next revolution is going to make mobile revolution even bigger. And that's the AI first revolution I was talking about. This is, from, this is the moment where the phones are becoming smarter. Smartphones now finally become smart. They start to understand. They start to understand language. They can see things, understand what they are seeing. You can, they can understand the context of what I'm talking to them about. And they can understand at what moment they should help me and how. So this is going to be um, a very interesting era where you can talk to phones, but not also to phones, to all different types of devices. Google, uh, if you have like a, a TV, car, uh, or a watch, and many, many more, with the types of devices will be um, devices that you can talk to them in a consistent way and get help and assistance from them. So assistant is a conversation between you and your Google, or between you and your assistant, which is helping you to get things done throughout, throughout your day. I want to insist on the word conversation here, because conversation is the most universal interface human beings have between themselves. We all can talk to each other from the moment we're a kid to the moment that we are older. We can always try to have, uh, express ourselves using this conversation, independent of age, race, literacy, so if you solve the problem of conversation with machine, if you can talk to machines, 
then I can talk to everything. I can talk to that chair. I can talk to this phone. I can talk to that device there. And this is the same experience when we are talking and uh, in the conversation with all of this. So I think the best way to actually show uh, where we are moving is to show uh, that uh, with live demos. And that's why I have this device here, which is going to uh, project uh, my phone. And uh, so in the, rest of, um, um, in the rest of my talk now, I'm going to show you um, some of the different capabilities that the assistant can do today and some of the capabilities which is coming uh, in the future. So let's get started. My password, you can see it. <laughs> you could guess it too, I guess. Um, so the first thing I, I want to show you is to show you how the assistant should be answering questions. We're talking about the future assistant and ultimate assistant. So let's see. Can you please tell me how is the weather going to be in Lugano tomorrow? In Lugano tomorrow, there will be scattered showers with a high of 21 and a low of 11 degrees Celsius. So first, please note that everything I'm showing you, these are live demos. They might fail, and you might have fun. It's risky for me. <laughs> um, second, note that the way I ask this question, I ask a natural language question, like, can you please tell me? Before, when we were entering the search box at, on your PC, you enter weather tomorrow Lugano. But now you use this long sentence, which is like how the humans talk. So this, is not, this means a natural language understanding. And now we're reaching the point that we can understand through machine learning and artificial intelligence that these mean the same thing. But these are the tasks which might come day to day. Now, when we talk about the assistant for billions of people, we're thinking about lots of different types of questions, not only day-to-day -day questions. So we had to work on really making the range of the answers that the assistant is capable of saying to be hundreds of millions of different questions. Now I'm going to show you one example of a specific question to show you a, a, an idea of uh, what's possible to do. Show me a list of rides in Europa Park. Okay, so this is... Here are some results from the web. So as you see, the rides became rights, and this is showing that this is a live demo. <laughs> Show me a list of rides in Europa Park. Europa Park's rides include Blue Fire, Silver Star, Woden Timber Coaster, and others. What is the height restriction for Blue Fire? You must be at least 1.31 meters tall to ride Blue Fire. So we're answering even very specific questions about a particular ride in a particular attraction park. And this is capabilities of today, and it's going to grow and grow. Now, let me show you another example of when you try to uh, ask a question which is uh, more complex, and this is like a question which is a uh, longer sentence. I want to show you this kind of state of art of natural language understanding that we're building. What is the name of the movie where Tom Cruise acts in it, and he plays pool, and while playing pool, he dances? some information about the color of money. Former pool hustler Felsen decides he wants to return to the game by taking a pupil. So as you see, this is really like getting closer and closer that you don't need to think how to ask your questions. You should just say it that way and it should work. Now let's show an example of how this voice interface would work with Street View, for example. Again, natural language and voice recognition together. Hey, I would like to be on the top of Eiffel Tower. Can you please bring me there now? Opening Street View. So we don't go totally there, but uh, at least we can have the uh, Street View experience. So, so now think about, think about when this voice interface is connected to all different types of applications and services, and then you can just jump directly by just talking to the right points that you want. Okay, so this is the first part of my demos, which is about answering things, getting things done. But uh, these are about answering things about the world. And I want to now show you some examples of personal aspect of the assistant, because this is a personal assistant, it's my assistant. And it should also know me and do things for me. For example, uh, my assistant should be able to do, how is the traffic from Zurich Airport to my home? There's light traffic from Zurich Airport, ZRH, so, to your home, so it should take 43 minutes. So my assistant knows where my home is, knows where my work is, my calendar, and this is all, again, thanks to machine learning. It's automatic. It's not that I explicitly said this email in my Gmail is a flight or that's my home address. Now, you can also, in the future, and already from some now, start to teach your assistant. For example, how is my team doing? 
Barcelona is second in Group A. So you'll start to know me during this talk. Um, the, the way that the assistant knows my, what my favorite team is, what is my favorite team? You told me that you like Barcelona. Is that I explicitly, actually, I said to the assistant I like Barcelona. I said like a few months back that. Think about how, how much, how next level of a smartness is that, that you can just teach things. Let me show you one of the upcoming uh, types of such changes. When the weather is more than 25 degrees, I can swim in the lake of Zurich. Okay, understood. So I just taught something to my assistant on this stage. And now I'm going to uh, check whether it understood it or not. Can I swim in the Lake of Zurich this weekend? No, you can't. The temperature is less than 25 degrees. Okay, now the assistant is not also only about talking and conversation, it's also about seeing things. Humans see things and if you want to have natural conversations, you expect that your assistant can understand what's in the pictures. Now I'm going to show you how my assistant, by applying machine learning and artificial intelligence on pictures, can try to understand what's in the picture and then combine that with voice and show you what that experience would look like. Show me pictures of me and my nephew drinking tea together. So I never tagged any picture about drinking tea or about Take me and look at these pictures or this picture that I'm showing to you now. This is all automatic. This is all machine learning trying to understand that this is what's, what is happening in that picture and uh, who are the people in that picture. So let me show you another one. Show me my pictures of mountains. This is what I found in your Google Photos. So these are different mountains picture that I have. Let's take on one particular one. Anyone knows which one is this? Okay, young Frau, that's a good answer, but let's ask her assistant. What is the name of this mountain and how tall is it? Young Frau is 4,158 meters tall. So again, my assistant understands what's in the picture and I can talk to him or it or her about what's on the picture. So, Let's now uh, move to the uh, next part of my demos, which is about context. Humans, when they we talk to each other, we always use context to understand each other and so that the, the conversation is more natural. Now, we're adding context to machine conversations also to make the, uh, as the conversations become much more natural. Let me start by an example like, show me pictures of Tom Thomas. These pictures should match. Without any context, perhaps that's the best guess someone can do. Now, if I say, Bayern Munich team roster. The roster for FC Bayern Munich includes Robert Lewandowski, James Rodriguez, Aryan Robin, so, and others. So now you see that there is someone here in this team called Thomas Muller. So if I say exact same question, show me pictures of Thomas. Pictures of Thomas Muller. So now we really understand what the, the, the meaning of Thomas here is Thomas Muller. This means contextual smartness. Now let me show you context in conversation. Where is the Empire State Building? The address for Empire State Building is Empire State Building, 355th Avenue. So New York, if I want to see pictures, USA. I want to see pictures. And sure, then, pictures of the Empire State and Building. And then the assistant will understand that the meaning of that sentence is pictures of the Empire State Building. You can continue that such type of conversation. How tall is it? The Empire State Building is 381. Who built it? Sterrett Corporation. When? Construction for the Empire State Building started in March. Show me Italian restaurants around there. <laughs> we are in Lugano. I found a few places. Call the first one. So note that I'm having a conversation with a machine. This is Calling not a human. Fiori. And I said only one time Empire State Building. Maybe we don't call. <laughs> Uh, 
I called them many times from Europe at the night time. <laughs> So, um, but this is, this is a machine where you can continuously have a conversation and not needing to repeat yourself. At each step, the sentence is understood thanks to the context. The context is helping that the conversations become more natural. So, for my last demo, last example, I want to, you notice that speech recognition failed one time. And this is actually really state of art. It has improved a lot. But we also have been working on uh, making speech recognition improved in a noisy environment. For that, I need your help. So, we will play a game or something together, which means that I will ask at some moment uh, to you to make as much noise as you can. You can scream, shout, and whatever, use your creativity. And I will try to ask my assistant, uh, for example, what is, when is my team playing next, Barcelona, and try to show you that it still should normally work in such setup. And your goal should be to make me say fail. Please make, and we can also cut my mic when I'm doing that. So please, please make as much noise as you can. So um, I think you failed, <laughs> and then the assistant won. So we can go back to the slides and um, so that I wrap up my, my talk. So what you, have, what you have seen in these demos is kind of the state of art, art of where we are. We're so excited of what can be done. There's much, much more because the technologies are getting ready to be put together and many types of assistive scenarios can be helping us throughout the day. There's lots of different types of technologies, the speech recognition, image recognition, context, um, personalization, and many more which is coming together to make these demos possible. Now, the AI revolution is not only about the assistant. The assistant is only one of those, uh, one of the parts of the AI revolution. We have the health, AI in health, in agriculture, smart cities, smart cars. There is a lot more happening in AI. The world is really becoming AI first. But, but even when you only think about the age of assistance and what assistant is good, able to do, I'm super excited about this because I kind of feel that going back to the initial, in, initial part of the talk, we are also in the business of saving time. Think about without having this, how much time you need to, do, to spend for uh, doing the, the types of uh, examples which I showed you. How much time you needed to spend to find those photos, my photos with uh, my nephew. Now, this makes me even, even more excited because saving time is something big. If you save time from people's life, people have more time to spend on things which really matter. Thank you.